Welcome to the griddle guys. Today we're gonna give you a quick, probably not quick enough, but a quick rundown on how I went from this guy to kind of trying to get thinner, you know, this guy and dropping about 110 pounds so far. I'll go over it. At the end of this will be some bonus footage of uh, a favorite soup that I love as well. But anyway, stick around, like, subscribe, hit the notifications. These guys may or may not say something. They're just looking at me kind of. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I'm gonna try and keep this short, but I'm gonna try and keep it informative. I get my notes, you can hit me up for comments. As far as in the comments, I read them all and uh, any questions or anything. But what it comes down to is this is just my diet that worked for me. And I don't wanna preach to anybody else because everybody else's diet is gonna work for them. Whatever works for them, works for them. That's yeah, people have been asking, what have you been doing? Right. Well, tell them what you've been doing. Big thing for me is mental. A year and a half ago, Nate approaches me says that I need help. Do you know? Oh, that aspect of mental. Do you, do you remember that, Nate? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so I'm um, 270 pounds, you know, I'm grouchy all the time, achy, feel, just always, you know, don't feel good. Very much a negative lens view of the world. Ne a lot of negativity. And uh, Nate says, I'm gonna give you six months. I did say that, yeah. And I'm gonna put it on your calendar, and he did, and we're gonna meet again. And if I don't show improvement, he's gonna but, have- But for the record, that was not weight loss. What I was saying is, I wanted you to be a happier person six months from now, regardless of how heavy you were. Yes. Yes, so Nate said that, my buddy Matt at work is along the line, same lines. My wife, obviously, same lines. Everybody was kind of uh, putting that to me that, you know, something wasn't right. And it just came down to a couple months earlier, I crashed my mountain bike, passed out, didn't know why. That bothered me, went to heart specialists, went to doctors, they couldn't find anything, but obviously looking at 270 pound guy on a mountain bike, riding out in the sun, they said, you gotta do something. Uh, I thought you were gonna say they felt bad for the mountain bike, but go on. They felt bad for the mountain <laughs> bike too. But uh, so anyway, so that kind of kickstarted this, this whole thing. And uh, my son <clears throat> has been crushing it, going to the gym every day, yeah. five days a week, getting up before he goes to college and he's been going, driving in the gym. My wife has been on this stupid Peloton that I bought her two years ago. That was a Christmas gift that I thought was just gonna be a coat rack. She uses it like every day for like two years. She's got like over 600 rides. It, it's crazy. So I always had that. I always had my son. My daughter's been always, uh, you know, really positive about everything in general. So there's really no excuse to, to not get to it. With me, growing up, always battling weight. It's something that uh, I went to my old reliable low carb. So started with that. Once I decided that I was going to diet and I had to figure out how, I fell back on high school days, growing up days, Atkins. Atkins. Atkins was a huge thing. I mean, sure, the guy died from a heart attack after, you know, doing his own diet. And but fell. everybody was doing it back in the day. But everybody was doing it. But the, the premise, you know, low carb. And uh, so with that, I just started doing low carb. And the nice thing about it is when you have 100 plus pounds to lose, any effort that you put into it, you're gonna see improvements. You're gonna see gains. So with that, losses. Yeah, losses. <laughs> Gains, I gotcha. mentally, I gotcha. losses weight-wise. You're going in the direction you want. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> so I could literally eat anything I wanted that was low carb, chicken wings, <clears throat> steak, you name it. Low carb bacon, breakfast stuff, bacon right behind us. Could eat any of that. And for the first 20 pounds, I dropped that within like uh, two months or so. And then it started to slow down. So then YouTube is such a great resource to have. You can go on one of the, uh, my favorite guys, this guy, uh, Huberman Labs. And he gives you the reason, he's a doctor or scientist. He gives you the reason behind why things are happening. So start watching that, start watching different videos and stuff and, uh, it, I modified, so I started doing less calories, low carb. And then with that, another week or two, I had some decent losses, and then again, it plateaued. So the big thing with it is that you, I set these goals of my total goal of how much weight I wanna lose, and I do like little mini or micro goals of this week, I wanna lose two pounds. You know, and I set something that's realistic and achievable, but not easy. And then I went to, uh, figuring out what am I gonna do to work out because I need to do something different. So I started on the treadmill. Stage two, you know, was after about 20 pounds or so, I was plateauing and I uh, needed to switch it up. And 
I always have excuses, you know, right? Life gives you excuses to not do the things that you don't wanna do. I can't work out because I don't have enough time. I'm tired, I need to do this, I need to do that. So seeing my wife on the Peloton, seeing my son getting up at 5.30, six o'clock every morning to go to the gym, I realized that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that I was, uh, that I couldn't do, it was just something that I was choosing not to. So I make my kids uh, and wife lunch in the morning, send them off to work and to school. So I decided I was gonna get up half hour early hit the treadmill, whatever I could do. I just needed to get my, my heart rate up and to the point where you can talk or have a conversation, but you struggle. So that's that's what I've determined is my sweet spot for getting the most out of my treadmill action. But anyways, so I made the determination every morning I'm gonna get up at 5.30, go hit the treadmill for 20 minutes to a half an hour and just do it. So I added that to lowering my calorie intake by eating more chicken, less steak, less chicken wings. And I did that for another four or five months, you know, and it was just every week, a pound, two pounds. Some weeks I'd have five pounds. The next week it would only be one pound or no weight loss. So it was definitely something that overall, I was averaging about 10 pounds a month for like six months. And then again, it started to plateau. But I realized that you can do whatever you wanna do and you just have to decide to do it. So. I don't feel like doing it. You know, you come up with all these reasons why you don't need to do it, why you can't do it. You do it long enough, you start to actually feel guilty the times that you don't do it. So then you start to realize, the mis you know, the guilt, you start to realize that, boy, I actually do feel better physically, mentally, after I'm doing a workout. But in short, stage two was literally just hitting the treadmill, 20 minutes to 30 minutes a day, cutting calories to roughly, I started counting calories under 2,000. And that, that's and minimizing pretty, carbs as well. Minimizing carbs. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I found is that as I transitioned throughout my, my eating is that by default, if you're cutting calories, you're going to get cut carbs for the most part. Yeah, because it's calorie dense. Right. Yeah. A bagel has like three or 400, you know, calories in a bagel, you know, and, and all of these things that you know are bad, not, it's not bad for you, but that if you're trying to lose weight, they work against you. So that kind of put a net around everything and really simplified my, my steps going forward. But that's pretty much stage two, was just slightly cutting calories, paying attention to carbs, getting a 20 to 30 minutes of just treadmill action, which was literally just walking on the treadmill. How difficult was under 2,000 calories a day? That was uh, tricky at first. Yeah. It was tricky at first. When you start getting- That's breakfast, man. When, well, when you, <laughs> you start getting the losses and you start getting the wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. there you there go, is. butter, butter. <laughs> but when you start getting the victories, you know, mentally, <clears throat> it builds on itself. So you, you literally just, you want to do better because you like that feeling of success. You know, whatever success is to you, whether it's a pound, whether it's a half pound, obviously the less you have to lose, um, that number is going to be lower. But if you're starting out with losing 100 pounds and you're shooting for like two pounds a week or three pounds, it's attainable. It's so, a victory. So mentally, when you started this journey, was the 100 pounds there on day one? The 100 pounds as a goal? The goal. Yeah. So I was 270 pounds. My ideal weight, according to Google and my doctor, 140 to 165 is the ideal weight. I'm 5'9". So that's the ideal weight. And I always just, you know, wrote that off as, oh, I got muscle, you know, weighs more. Everybody says that. I'm big bone. Big bone. But anyway, so that was my uh, my goal. I wanted to get to 180s. That was it. So I my main focus was pounds. dropping so, weight. So, yeah, right out the gate. Your, your goal was yeah. 100 pounds. Your goal was 100 pounds. Right out of the gate, goal was 100 pounds. That's and since... in your head, what did you think? Like, your, your what did that look like for you as far as like, hey, I'm going to lose 20 pounds a month, five pounds a month? Did so, you think about that or was it just not something you considered? So I always had had two goals set every week. It was my lofty goal and it was my success goal. So this is good enough if I like, cause you know how you eat, you know how you feel. You know if you have a bad week, if you cheated and you had an extra burger, or you, whatever. So you set these, I personally set, because everything with me is mental. Nate will attest to that and Chris will attest. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with dealing with stuff. But anyways, I set these, a soft goal and a, a better goal and if I came in at like one pound and I really wanted to lose two, being down one pound, it was still a little bit of a mental victory. It was still- Stay away. Right, it was still. <laughs> What's really tough is that you have these, like one week you'll have five pounds, the next week you won't have anything. 
and you know it seems like when you have a really good week no matter what the next week isn't as good because your body's adjusting you're trying something different and so it's just always nice to have the two goal system where you're not completely let down keeps you in the fight and you kind of just keep moving forward and hoping the next week's going to be that week again you know so it's really just a matter of going through the steps but uh that was pretty much all of stage two was just hitting the treadmill once a day, five to seven days a week, depending on the week, uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour, getting my heart rate up, cutting calories to a certain degree. And that got me through another, you know, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. So at that point I was at like 60 pounds, wanted to drop another 40, and that's where things start to get a little tougher. So we're off to stage three. Stage three, the last, you know, 40 pounds or so, uh, was definitely tougher. I knew I needed to up my game, change things up. I, uh, a lot of people talking about intermittent fasting. But you're also feeling good going into the stage, right? You, you, Get that weight loss going. It really starts to build on itself. Yeah. And you really like, you start to see changes. You start to see your pant size go down. I was at like a 40, 42, a tight 38 for pant size, you know, waist size. And uh, you start to loosen up. You start to go down in size. It, it, it really does build on itself. So stage three, I plateaued you know, right around that 60 pound point. And uh, a couple weeks, I knew that I had to change it up. So I cut my calorie count back to roughly 1500 calories a day is what I was shooting for. Same thing, low carb at that point, just cutting it back to 1500 calories. You're kind of cutting out fat. You're kind of cutting out a lot of the stuff, processed food, stuff like that, that have a lot of calories. So I kind of transitioned to a chicken, turkey. And if you see in my pre previous video, a lot of turkey vegetables, a lot of vegetables. I was less concerned about the carbs at this point. So vegetables have very low calories. You get the fiber. I always have a protein. And that's kind of what my diet migrated to. High vegetable, I think it's more of a paleo diet is what they Yeah, have. I think so. But the vegetables also, they give you sort of some bulk. It gives you bulk, makes you feel full. And uh, like I said, calorie, uh, pretty low in calories. Uh, so I'd always have a protein, always have vegetables. I started doing this kale soup that if you hang around for the end of the video, uh, kale, spinach, um, collard greens, I throw in there. It's pretty much whatever I have left over at the end of the week for making my wife salads and stuff like that, I throw it into a soup uh, with broth that I usually have in the freezer. Um, but anyway, so I cut calories. I started doing intermittent fasting, which for me meant I was trying to uh, not eat between I started out at like between 6 p.m. and 10 a.m. It actually felt good. You know, like it, I wake up and it's like, you feel a little lighter on your toes, you know, when you wake up in the morning. So I started playing around with that. And then I kind of just realized that, well, I get that extra time at night, I'm gonna throw in a second workout. So I started hitting the treadmill for a second time, pretty much five days a week. So I would do it in the morning for 20 minutes to a half an hour. I would do it after work, 20 minutes to a half an hour. And it was just, Feeling great. I was able to keep my calories under 1500. I tightened up that window for the intermittent fasting to roughly between 10 and four. So 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I found that for me, it was my sweet spot. Unfortunately, everybody makes a sacrifice when you're dieting around you because you're grouchy some days, you're having a hard time other days, you're not eating with your family, you're sitting there at the table when they're eating and you're not. But anyways, you, you kind of go through that and as long as you get a supportive network around you, it's really helpful. But I cut my intermittent fasting back to between 10 and four. I would have my last meal at four. It was usually a lighter meal. And I found that I wake up in the morning feeling hungry, but really feeling good. The treadmill felt better. I felt better. I felt more alert. I just, it just felt better. So I, I kind of stuck with that. So to kind of wrap up stage three, and this was for another, you know, couple months that I was doing this, I was doing about an hour on the treadmill between the morning and afternoon, was intermittent fasting pretty much six to seven days a week of not eating between four and 10 a.m. I was keeping my calories under 1500 calories a day. Again, low carb and ends up being low fat. And that's kind of what I stuck with right to the end. I was changing up my food here and there. Um, mostly again, just vegetables and protein. And it really worked out well. Uh, for me, circling back around with the making excuses or having, being able to make excuses when I started my working, working out or treadmill, I determined that doing the treadmill for me was going to be the best 
course of action because it's always in my basement. This was my kid's playroom, which I stole from them, put my wife's bike and got her a treadmill and I ended up taking that from her. I found that with if I start out with the treadmill working out, instead of going for a walk around the neighborhood or jogging, I, I won't have an excuse because it's always in my basement. The weather's always the same and I can do it whenever I want. I, I have the benefit of working from home. So even on my breaks, if I miss a morning or an afternoon workout, I can do it midday and it's, it works out. My treadmill, which I'll show you in a moment, is I got off of uh, Craigslist, $500. I know that a lot of people, you know, it's expensive getting this stuff, um, but $500, I put a custom TV on it that was $100 off of Amazon, and I got a desk mount and got some screws and just screwed it together. So I made my $600 treadmill into a $2,500 gym treadmill. And I so I- say it's, it's like a hack Peloton treadmill. It's like a hack, video, right? and, and it's a Roku TV. So I got Peloton apps, which is something that I use, the Peloton app that my wife has to do workouts now, because I've transitioned to weights and I'm trying to start, I don't mind putting on weight now. But anyways, I, I was able to get a really nice treadmill, Craigslist, modify it to fit. Point being is that it doesn't have to be expensive. And that's what worked for me because again, it took out the excuses of I can't do it for X, Y, and Z. Whatever you can do is what you should do. So if you can do something every day, whatever that is, taking your dog for a walk, going to the gym, whatever is going to work as long as you're doing something every day, every other day to keep it consistent. So once I hit my 100 pounds goal, my original goal, I realized that I still wanted to lose a little bit more weight, but at the same time, because I wasn't working out heavy with weights or anything, I was mostly doing cardio. I started to transition the past like month or two, uh, switching over to that. So it's more of a, a stage four, end of stage three, you know, in my workout plan. But the end result is that I'm still keeping it right around 1500 calories. I don't mind putting on a pound or two. I'd really like to still lose another five or 10 pounds, but well working out. So I want to, I'm, Got my weight set behind me, same thing. I bought that piece by piece, you know, over time. It's really not that expensive. And my wife, I steal her Peloton app and they have workouts. It's incredible how much of a workout you can do, even if you don't have weights, just using your body weight. I got a pull-up bar that I made in the other room. I use that. I, it, you just, you make it work if you want to do it. But yeah, in short, do what you can do and set goals, make them hard goals, middle goals, easy, easy goals, and try and find other people that have the same interests or going through the same thing or just uh, some sort of support. So I personally, I, from day one, I weigh in every single week and my buddy Matt checks in every single week. What'd you do? How'd you do? Every single week. These guys, they don't care. They're like, what are you doing not eating again? We, we cook. We got a cooking show. But no, they- We're gonna <laughs> eat. We gotta <laughs> eat. We got a cooking show. And I, the, as I mentioned, you lean on the people around you and, and that's not easy for them. And they've put up with it. They've dealt with it. And, we couldn't uh, be happy for you, Jeff. Couldn't it, be happy. For the benefit of all, hopefully, but uh, but it is something that you want to have that. So for well, me- Look at this guy. Right? That's it. <laughs> I can't even write. Yeah. That's how it's, anyways. It's good stuff, Jeff. So stick around if you want to see how to make my famous kale, collard green. Sometimes I put spinach. Anyways, it's great soup. Uh, it's a great meal. Uh, hopefully this was helpful uh, to somebody, uh, anybody. But uh, definitely like, definitely subscribe, hang around, see what I get cooking. I'll have the links below for Huberman Labs, great guy on, on the, the science of dieting and stuff. Uh, Jocko Willink is another guy that I watch on a regular basis for the mental aspect of it, of not making excuses and just doing what you gotta do. And uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys for hanging around. I let the uh, griddle guys go because I they don't like this stuff. So I didn't want to put them through it and I think they actually have issues with the roughage. So for this soup, I have this almost every day uh, during the week, depends on the week, but I make a big pot so that way it gets me through the week. I have it for lunch and uh, it feels good. It fills me up, very low in carbohydrates, low in calories, really the only calories is the uh, chicken itself, which is good stuff. Um, but anyways, my favorite, collard greens, kale, sometimes I throw spinach in. Uh, I'm actually just gonna get right to it. So first things first, this is my homemade turkey broth in this case, that I have, uh, I'll have a link up down somewhere. Uh, it's one of the previous videos that I showed you breaking down a turkey and making this stock. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there, just in the bottom. Put the stove on, 
And I'm gonna start by sweeping the uh, mushrooms. That's about two cups. Onions, same thing. It's about one large onion, two small onions. Celery. That was left over from last week, my wife's salads. About one bunch. And garlic. Garlic in there. I just put a little bit of the stock so that way it won't stick because I didn't really want to add oil or fat to it when there's no need to. I got my beautiful wife behind the camera getting this for you guys. Alright, so if you want to come in here, this beautiful little medley. Just put a little bit more stock in. So we're just going to simmer this five, five minutes or so. All right, so this is uh, this has been about five minutes. Went a little longer. Did a lot of stuff in here. It wasn't really hot. Anyways, if you look in the pot, you'll see that everything's kind of sweat down a little bit. I mean, they're a little translucent. This is where we're going to add basil. Again, not required. And we got our chopped olive greens. Now we are going to put enough broth so that these are. Pretty much covered. So I put about, we'll call it, there's four cups in one of these, probably 12 cups of uh, broth or three of those to get started. And you can see that it's just barely floating there. And actually, probably put, might as well just put the rest. So we're going to bring this up to its boil and we're going to let it simmer for 20 minutes. And I'll show you what that looks like. Soup is done. So all in, we're at like I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes cooking. As you can see, the kale. That's good. I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt in there. Broccoli, same thing, probably about two cups. And that is it. That is my favorite, I call it vegetable soup. Kale soup, miracle soup, whatever you wanna call it. But as you can see, I already shut the heat off. I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes. Got to cool down anyways before I put it in the fridge. But that'll cook the broccoli, and that's it. Nice, warm, delicious meal. Anytime you need it, just sitting there in the fridge. Thanks for hanging around, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Let me know if you tried this, do a variation of it, and what you thought. Uh, anyways, we love you guys. Cheers. All right, we're just wrapping up. This is the almighty treadmill. Again, a couple hundred bucks off of Craigslist. That is a sweet custom TCL. Amazon TCL Roku TV. And guys, wait for it. So I can rotate the TV. So when I'm doing flow workouts right there, that's nice, the popping.